I'm Johnny. Um, I spent three months uh, in South America last spring and um, was working on an animal refuge in Bolivia with capuchin monkeys. Uh, you might know that species of monkey because they're used a lot in uh, film and TV. Uh, Marcel from Friends, pretty famous <laughs> capuchin monkey. Infamous, <laughs> rather. Um, and, uh, and that's because they're incredibly smart uh, monkeys with incredibly uh, good small motor skills and uh, memories and um, well I guess you'll just see so and the refuge um, was taking these monkeys from abusive private ownerships in Bolivia and getting them ready for uh, release in um, in the wild in, in communities of monkeys in the wild in the Amazon rainforest February 20th, 2010. Yesterday, two male capuchins sucked each other off on my lap. <laughs> Later that afternoon, two males, I'm pretty sure it was Nicholas and Papulito, were sitting on my lap and Nicholas started to give Papulito head. Papulito did not reciprocate. <laughs> Thinking this unfair, I gently nudged Papulito's face into Nicholas's crotch and Papulito eagerly began licking away. March 3rd, 2010. <laughs> Yesterday I let an old capuchin named Lerona sit on my back for almost an hour, running her little fingers through my hair and over my arms and chest, looking for bugs and bits of dead skin. It was like a massage. It was better than a massage. It's so good to just have someone pay so much attention to you. Every day after lunch I go into the quarantine and say, Lerona, it's time for my three o'clock. <laughs> she also eats my earwax. But she doesn't <laughs> dig in as far as the other capuchins do. Isn't life under the sun such a crazy dream? <laughs> One capuchin named Queenie has gone into heat. She spends her entire day masturbating with her leg while staring at me and screaming. <laughs> if I let her climb on me, she will never let go. She just hangs on me and screams. Even when I'm in the quarantine kitchen cutting up vegetables for the monkey's little dinners, she's sitting in the window, staring at me, masturbating, and screaming. <laughs> it's definitely hard work, though. I spend at least three or four hours a day cleaning up dirty pieces of fruit and shit with Queenie screaming for sexual gratification in the background. It's also surreal. I feel like an Aztec filth goddess. I suppose I do lose some man points for not working with the mountain lions, but I love those dirty bitches in monkey quarantine. Oh, by the, uh, this was my second time visiting the refuge and the first time I worked with the mountain lion, so you know, the last part probably didn't make sense. March 7th, 2010. A large male named Caesar escaped from his cage yesterday for a morning of wanton debauchery and general mayhem. Caesar is one of the capuchins who knows how to uncook carabiners and cords. He released four other monkeys who were on cords and also opened the baby cage. Then Caesar had sex with Natalia, so she's probably pregnant now. <laughs> We managed to catch all the monkeys that escaped except Caesar, but he hasn't been causing as much trouble today. Hopefully the vets will trank him soon with the blowgun. <laughs> March 10th, 2010. I woke up this morning with the feeling of needles in my stomach, heartburn in my throat, and something akin to the bloatedness that comes with drinking too much soda. I stumbled to the bathroom and puked up the frosted flakes I had for dinner the night before. I went back to my room and tried to get ready for the day. I made it down to the quarantine, and after washing a few dishes, found myself once again in the bathroom, but this time I was spewing from the other end. The vets at the refuge told me that I should go to the hospital. I decided that first it was time to go back to my room. I stood under a cold shower for a few minutes, and then passed out in bed. While sleeping, I dreamed that I was wandering through an overcast, lightning-ridden, apocalyptic landscape. I had a capuchin, I think Lorona, sitting on my shoulder, her metal cord in my hand. Tupac Shakur's 96 Bonnie and Clyde was playing in the background. All I need in this life of sin is me and my girlfriend. <laughs> As we crossed the bridge, we saw above us a highway sign that read, Shit City. The area beyond was a lot like monkey quarantine. A sea of cords and cages and monkeys attached to lines of rope with carabiners. Except now there were thousands of cabochins, and it was as if the quarantine city had never been cleaned. Dirty pieces of fruit and vegetables, as well as shit and torn leaves were strewn everywhere. I awoke several hours later and walked down to the hospital, squirted what little diarrhea I had left into a cup, and then handed it over to the doctor. 
While waiting for the results of my parasite test, I watched as a man carried a black rabbit by its ears out of the biohazard zone where I assumed they were analyzing my feces. The man dropped the struggling lagomorph on the tiled floor and then spent several minutes chasing it around until he finally managed to catch it. He then carried it back into the biohazard zone. When the test results came back, it was confirmed. I had parasites, though which ones has been lost in translation. They gave me a whole bunch of drugs, so I should probably be fine. March 11th, 2010. Below, I have described three of my favorite monkeys. Victor. Victor makes the list for being a general badass. Even though he's trapped in a cage, he is still the alpha male from hell in the quarantine. Victor is a huge capuchin, and several vets have expressed to me that he fears nothing and may be the most dangerous monkey in the park. If Victor got free, I would probably be more terrified than a Haitian who just found out that the drug lords had taken over Haiti again. <laughs> I, I actually can't believe I wrote that. I don't know. I'm thinking on that, on that sentence. Um, Victor is currently imprisoned for starting bloody wars with various alpha males and their gangs in other sections of the park. Also, female capuchins and their babies hang out around Victor's cage every day. These are Victor's hoes, and the babies are the children he has had with him. Three times I have seen Victor stick his purple cock through the bars of his cage and fuck those shameless hoes. <laughs> Roosper. Roosper is one of my favorites because I am one of his favorites. Roosper is now considered the most aggressive capuchin on a cord, but he is also more cuddly with me than any other capuchins. He mostly seems to hate female volunteers, often pulling their hair and biting them very, very hard. We had one quarantine volunteer quit after only one day because Rooster bit her quite deeply on the hand. And right after he did so, he gave me big puppy dog eyes and cuddled up in my arms. I must admit, I secretly love Rooster's chauvinistic ways. Also, Rooster and Pepe, also a boy, were going at it the other day when we were trying to put them away for bed. And that just about made my day. Lorona. One of my biggest character flaws is that I demand constant praise and attention from the people around me. Without it, I start to feel very unappreciated. If it wasn't for Lorona, I might have tried to switch out of the quarantine after only two weeks. She will literally sit in my lap or on my shoulder for hours, running her little fingers through my beard and hair, itching my bug bites, picking the dirt out from under my fingernails, and licking up bits of dead skin. She's like a personal masseuse that is available for free at all times of the day. <laughs> Lorona is quite old and has a large scar under her right eye, but she's still my favorite. All right, well, I think that is all I'm going to read to you from the, um, from the Capuchin zine that I wrote. Um, <laughs>